this video clip we're going to take a look at dissolving precipitates and what chemical action can be taken to make a solid precipitate dissolve. Now if we have a saturated solution that has some solid present and we're in a state of equilibrium to make the solid dissolve we want to do something that's going to drive the reaction to the right or shift it to the right. To drive the reaction to the right we need to do something with the ions, in this case either carbonate or calcium ions. If we can make the calcium or carbonate ion concentrations decrease, that would cause the reaction to respond by shifting to the right and we would see the amount of solid lessen and possibly disappear by the reaction continually shifting to the right in its attempts to replace the calcium or carbonate ions that have been taken away. For example, if we were to add an acid, which is H plus ions, to the solution of saturated solution of calcium carbonate, when the H plus ions go bump in the beaker with the carbonates, they're going to create the weak acid H2CO3. The H2CO3 will promptly decompose into CO2 and water. Because the carbonate has now turned into carbon dioxide and water, the amount of carbonate ions present in the equilibrium is going to lessen or go down. Because the amount of carbonate ions is now lesser since the carbonate has turned into carbon dioxide and water, the reaction would respond by shifting to the right to replace the carbonate ions that have been taken away and we would see the solid dissolve or disappear. Now one thing that will be helpful in looking at what things make solids dissolve is reacquainting ourselves with all of the strong acids. Our hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, nitric, sulfuric, chloric, and perchloric acids are all examples of strong acids. Now if we remember the key thing with all strong acids is that these acids dissociate 100 percent in solution, meaning all of these in solution, for example the hydrochloric acid, exists entirely as separate H plus aqueous ions and Cl minus aqueous ions. This will have implications as to which acids can and which acids cannot dissolve different solid precipitates. For example, let's look at the saturated solution of silver bromide. We have our silver bromide solid. It's in equilibrium with its aqueous ions in the saturated solution silver ions and bromide ions. Now if we were to add acid, which is H plus, to this particular solution, when the H plus bumps into some bromide ions in the beaker, these ions are going to remain separate. So in solution, these will remain separate as H plus and Br minus ions. Consequently, the Br minus ion concentration remains unchanged and because the Br minus ion concentration is unchanged, the reaction does not shift at all because there's no need to shift to replace any ions that have been taken away. So in this circumstance, something such as silver bromide is a solid that's not going to dissolve upon the addition of acid or H plus ions. On the other hand, let's take a look at a saturated solution of silver cyanide. We have our solid silver cyanide in equilibrium with aqueous silver ions and cyanide ions. Now again, anything we do to cause either the silver or cyanide ion concentrations to go down will drive the reaction to the right and make the silver cyanide precipitate disappear. In this case, if we add in some H plus ions or acid to the solution, the H plus ions, when they bump into cyanide ions, are going to make HCN, which is a weak acid. These ions remain together and create HCN weak acid molecules. Because so we form some weak acid molecules of HCN, that causes the amount of cyanide concentration to drop. Because the cyanide ions are now tied up as part of hydrocyanic acid molecules. Because the cyanide concentration has gone down, 
the reaction responds by shifting to the right, and we would see the silver cyanide solid disappear or dissolve upon the addition of H plus ions or acid to this particular saturated solution. Now another aspect of this dissolving is it's possible for us to write an overall chemical equation to show in which circumstances an acid will dissolve a solid precipitate. What we're going to do is combine a couple chemical equilibrium equations to get an overall equation. The first one we have is just for the equilibrium in the saturated solution of the solid silver cyanide in equilibrium with its aqueous ions. And we have a K value, our KSP, for this particular reaction. We have a second chemical equilibrium equation, which is for the weak acid, hydrocyanic acid, which goes through a partial dissociation or an equilibrium reaction where a small fraction breaks into H plus and cyanide ions. This Ka, the A here stands for acid. This is an equilibrium constant for the equilibrium of a weak acid in equilibrium with the partial dissociation of its aqueous ions. Now in our reaction, it's the addition of H plus that drives the reaction to the right, causing the solid to disappear. Consequently, our H plus here needs to be on the reactant side in our overall equation. So the equation we have here for our weak acid, in order to get the H plus on the reactant side, we're going to take this equation and flip it and write it in the reverse direction. Now that we've taken the reaction and flipped it, the K value for this new reaction will be the reciprocal, or 1 over 5.8 times 10 to the minus 10. Our next step, we're going to add together the two equilibria. The aqueous cyanide ions are going to cancel out. And combining the equations together, we end up with this for our overall chemical equation. Now what this shows is, with the H plus as a reactant, if the H plus concentration goes up, that's going to drive the reaction or shift it to the right as the reaction tries to compensate for the additional H plus. By shifting to the right, the amount of solid that's present is going to lessen, and it's going to turn into silver ions and HCN weak acid molecules. To get the new equilibrium constant for the overall reaction, we have to multiply together the two equilibrium constants that we have for the two reactions we've added together. Multiplying the constants together, our first one and second one, gives us a new equilibrium constant of 2.07 times 10 to the negative 7 for our overall chemical equation. Now, earlier we saw an example of something such as silver bromide which will not dissolve upon the addition of acid. Reason being, again, the H plus ions, when they bump into the Br minus, Br minus ions, they remain separate from each other. Because they remain separate from each other, the Br minus concentration doesn't get altered, and because the Br minus concentration isn't altered, there's no need for the reaction to shift, and the solid precipitate remains intact. This would be true for any solid where the negative ion in the solid is something that is a negative ion also found in a strong acid. However, there is a means to dissolve these particular solid precipitates. Now again, to make something dissolve, we just have to do something to make either the silver concentration or the bromide concentration decrease. The reaction will respond to that change by trying to replace those ions that have been taken away by shifting to the right, and we would see the solid disappear. One thing that we'll need to acquaint uh, ourselves with is something known as common complex ions that have ammonia and hydroxide. These complex ions are things that can also be used to manipulate equilibria, and in this case cause a solid that will not dissolve upon addition to acid. We can make it dissolve upon addition of something such as ammonia. Now we have our equilibria that we know will not dissolve in the presence of H plus or acid. However, if we notice up here, there's a silver ammonia complex ion that can be formed. What this means is 
if we were to toss ammonia into this saturated solution equilibrium, the silver ions and the ammonia, when they come in contact with each other in the beaker, they're going to form the silver ammonia complex ion. Now what this does, by the silvers getting tied up, silver ions getting tied up in the silver ammonia complex ion, is the concentration of the silver ions would go down because the silver ions are now part of this complex ion. With the silver concentration going down, the reaction would respond by shifting to the right to replace those silver ions that have been taken away and are now part of the silver ammonia complex and we would see the silver bromide solid dissolve or go away. Now to all of our all-star chemists watching this video, we will need to learn all of these complex ions. I'd recommend pausing the video and jotting down the formulas of these nine complex ions as we'll be utilizing them in our exercise and also on our quizzes and tests. As in our previous example with acid, with our complex ions, it's also possible to write an overall chemical equilibrium equation to show how and why the solid will dissolve upon the addition of either ammonia or hydroxide to, to create a complex ion. We're going to combine a couple chemical equilibrium equations to get an overall equilibrium. Our first one is for the equilibrium of the saturated solution of silver bromide where we have silver bromide as a solid as our reactant in equilibrium with its aqueous ions. And we have a KSP value for this particular equilibrium reaction. Our second equilibrium reaction is for the formation of the complex ion. Now because it's the formation of the complex ion, the complex ion is always going to be written as the product. This also has an equilibrium constant called the K sub F, where the F here stands for formation. Once again, since it's a formation equilibrium constant, the complex ion in this reaction for the value of this constant would be written as the product in the equation. When we combine the equilibria, we want to make sure that we have the ammonia as a reactant. The reason we want the ammonia as a reactant is that an increase in the ammonia concentration should drive the reaction to the right, causing the solid precipitate to dissolve. If we look at our two reactions, we have our solid precipitate already on the left, a reactant side. Our ammonia is also on the left, a reactant side. These two reactions can be combined as they're currently written. When we combine them, our aqueous silver ions are going to cancel out. The overall equation that we get has our silver bromide solid as a reactant. And the equation indicates here with the ammonia, if the ammonia concentration were to go up, that's going to drive the reaction to the right. By driving the reaction to the right, we would see our solid precipitate dissolve or disappear. By going to the right, we're converting the solid precipitate into the silver ammonia complex ion, which is aqueous and aqueous bromide ions. Now to calculate our new equilibrium constant, since we've added together the two equilibria, we have to multiply together the constants for the two reactions we've added. Multiplying the equilibrium from reaction one and reaction two that have been added together gives us an equilibrium constant for the new overall reaction, showing how our silver bromide solid can dissolve upon the addition of ammonia. Our new constant is 9.01 times 10 to the negative sixth. 